This home on Fifth Avenue in Decorah, Iowa is about to get a makeover. It's a typical 1950s ranch style home, but it's a unique project because it's more than a cosmetic makeover. This is an energy efficiency makeover. We have two major goals with this house. The first is to dramatically decrease the amount of energy used and the costs associated with that energy use. The second goal is to completely eliminate the carbon footprint of the house. Along the way, we'll also accomplish four other goals. Provide a model of reasonable and practical food sustainability. Reduce fuel use from transportation. Reduce waste by retrofitting and recycling. We have a trailer load of redwood siding that we've reclaimed from this home. Uh, we've already took a, another load of white vinyl siding to save it and reuse it when possible on, on building projects. And document and share the process with others. An average house uses $2,000 of energy each year and creates 17 tons of carbon emissions annually. How do we get to zero? Let's see. In order to achieve our net zero goal, we need a plan. An important partner in the project is the Winnesheek Energy District, where they have hands-on expertise in energy efficiency analysis and energy planning for all kinds of buildings. So you might ask, what is this Winnesheek Energy District? So then they came up with the idea, Roosevelt did, with the idea of the Soil Conservation District. So that uh, what we said was that you form a district and we'll provide the technical and financial assistance to help you. So, but. That's how it got established, but then along with that, what came out of it, I don't think they really realized what they were doing, was that every farmer in the country then started to talk conservation. But uh, out of that came what we call today the conservation ethic amongst farmers. And we've both worked with soil and water districts a great deal over the years in natural resources conservation. And when I started working a little bit in energy a few years back and studying some of the state programs, it became pretty clear that we had those that federal leadership and the state and federal programs, in fact, we've had them for decades, and they haven't had the impact from the ground up that we could have with that kind of local leadership. So locally led is a concept that applies to politics and economics and ethics, and uh, we haven't had it in energy, and so we went back to the soil and water model and said, hey, that let's try that for energy. Now that we know what the Winnesheek Energy District is and where the idea comes from, what exactly do they do? I heard some ads on the radio from Winnesheek Energy District. I really didn't know what they were, but I was hearing a lot of neat stories about how they can save us money on the home, and we needed to save some money in our en energy uh, bills. We contacted them, and they came in and did not necessarily an audit, but an entire house plan on energy savings, wouldn't you say? Yes, we have a 40-year-old house, and we knew it needed some help. Uh, these guys came in and provided some solutions. The Winnesheek Energy District has various programs to help home and business owners save energy and money. They have a basic, low-cost program for homeowners that is focused on making immediate changes that have the greatest impact for the lowest cost. Energy planning is the next level. Uh, we had planned to make some significant changes to the house, some renovations over the course of the next 10 years. And they came in and did an energy plan for us in which they really helped us to think about how best to include energy efficiency in those plans that we, we had made. Um, part of that was uh, an immediate renovation of the attic space and they helped us to figure out how to make that attic renovation mo the most energy efficient. Uh, another aspect was uh, the insulation of the basement which is something that will happen in the future as we renovate the basement. And a third aspect of that plan was to um, put a new boiler in immediately um, which is uh, what we did and has significantly helped our energy efficiency. So why would you want to make your house more energy efficient? There are three main reasons. First off, it's going to save you money. Second, it's going to make your house a whole lot more comfortable. And last of all, it's good for the environment. So how do we do this? It takes a plan. Buildings are systems, and they have three main components. The shell, or the outside of the house, the mechanicals, the heating and cooling, and the lighting and appliances. For maximum efficiency, all the components need to work together. The heating needs of this house were quite frankly ridiculous. There was almost no insulation at all. So the first thing we needed to do was to tighten up the shell and increase the insulation. 
We're in the basement, and as of now, the basement is completely uninsulated. Uh, it has uh, concrete block walls, uh, which have a, basically a zero R value. We got same with the metal windows here, they're single pane glass, and the rim joists are uninsulated as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to insulate the walls, we're going to replace the windows, and we're going to insulate the rim joist. Now, for those of you who don't know, the rim joist is where the floor joists run up against uh, the outside of the wall. And that's often a place in homes that's overlooked and is very easy to insulate. Uh, generally, with uh, some spray foam insulation, it can be done relatively cheaply. After insulating the wall cavities with the wet blown cellulose, we added a continuous layer of foam board insulation around the outside of the house. This prevents any heat loss through the studs in the walls. We finished the shell with stucco, which is durable, low maintenance, and very attractive. Well, the nice thing about this project for me was that, um, at least on the interior, my father had worked on this house, and this house is what I call has good bones. It was built real solid, they used real plaster, it was framed up properly, it had a good foundation, solid roof, very simple house, but it was built extremely well. And once the foam is put on, we rasp it, which is basically like sanding it, feathering it, making it nice and flat and smooth. Then we just embed the fiberglass mesh over the foam. Then once the base coat is completed, yeah. then Ed and I came along and we applied the, the finish coat. Um, he trowels it on and then as it starts to set at the proper time, I work along with a float and what I try to do is I work sort of a figure eight pattern so that it's what I call perfectly imperfect. So that under critical lighting it's perfectly imperfect. But it still gives a character and texture, you know, and, and you look at it and you know that it's stucco. And I think it works really well. It's real clean, it's real simple. And, you know, by doing this, you know, right over the top of the foam, the R value, and, and uh, you know, it's just a really neat way to go. We wanted to create a sheltered space between the house and the garage, so we walled off the front and back of the breezeway, and we were able to reuse the original front and side doors of the house. Uh, these windows that we installed in this uh, house for this project are a Pella. It's a 350 series window. It's a triple pane glass, which means there are two gas-filled chambers in this in these windows. Um, they have uh, a foam-filled frame besides. So they're a very efficient window. They're running in U-factor ranges from a 0.17 to a 0.21, which is a is very impressive for windows these days. And so. Uh, that's why they were chosen for this project. We've estimated that we've cut the heating needs by over 70%. We are putting solar electric modules on this roof. Our goal is to make all the electricity that this house is going to use. There's gonna be about four kW, four kilowatts of solar modules on this roof. And we hope that it makes somewhere around 4,800 kilowatt hours per year. So it's, it's going to average about 13 or 14 kilowatt hours per day. The modules are Trina modules. Uh, they're each rated at 240 watts each. They're going to feed a inverter that will take the DC power from the solar modules and convert it to AC power identical to the power company. So all the electricity generated by the solar will be converted and put into the house as regular AC power. If they make extra, which they will during the day, it goes out to the Alliant Energy System and other people in the neighborhood will use that electricity. And then at night when the sun's not shining, Alliant will give it back at no charge. It's called net billing. And so we don't have to worry about storing the energy. Alliant acts as our battery. We uh, make the extra. We make as much as we need during the course of a year. And, but we don't have to use it as we make it. We just make it and know that we have it to use when we need it. The old electric water heater was a real drag on our electric usage. And since we're trying to produce all the electricity on site, 
we switch to a high efficiency gas water heater. We also move the washer and dryer very close by so that all the hot water in the house is concentrated in this very small area. We're using two sources of energy to heat and cool the house, electricity and gas. An air source heat pump provides cooling in the summer and heating during all but the coolest parts of the year. It uses electricity, which is provided by our solar panels on the roof. During the coldest parts of the year, we have a high efficiency gas furnace that provides supplemental heat. How does it work together? We help you work with a contractor of your choice so you get the job done right, and we can answer any questions you may have along the way. The Energy District was involved in this. Uh, they, I found out that they're very knowledgeable people, very easy uh, to get along with, very easy to work with. Um, they are good at what they do. They have good ideas and they know they can back it up. And I would, myself, if I was, uh, I would suggest to any contractors that it'd be uh, to their benefit to be able to work with the, with these people in the energy district because it's a thing of the future, I believe, and I think that uh, we all ought to take advantage of, of what they are doing to, to try to help everybody out. Everyone can make improvements and the Energy District can help. The Energy District is here. It's a local organization that creates local jobs that are good for all of us. I'm just thrilled to think that Decora is the first and only district um, county to have this program. It's, we're so proactive here and uh, it's helped us tremendously. As I said, Earlier, we were planning on saving $200 a month in the winter time, and you know that's going to go back into the community um, for food, for clothing, and I just feel very lucky to be a part of this community. Winnesheek County is the first county in the nation to have an energy district, but we're certainly not going to be the only ones for long. What the Winnesheek Energy District is doing is good for the local economy. We've worked with hundreds of small business owners and homeowners to help make their buildings more energy efficient. When they save money each month, that money stays within our community. They're also hiring local contractors and getting materials from local sources. It's all good for the local economy. How did we do on this home? We reduced our energy bills by about 75% and have a carbon footprint of less than two tons, which will offset with the Energy District's local offset program, Oneota Tags. We accomplished our goals. It's easy to find out how you can do this for your home or commercial building and enjoy all the benefits of energy efficiency, lower energy bills, a smaller carbon footprint, and a more comfortable building. The Winnesheek Energy District can help. Call 563-382-4207, email joel at energydistrict.org, or visit our website to get more information. What Winnesheek Energy District does is enhance the quality of life here. We have a great community, and this exemplifies how we're growing it. Working together, we can help each other and help ourselves. Liza and I have lived in many cities throughout the United States and Decor is that first community we found that not only has a vibrant college and a great downtown, but there are many community activities such as the arts and trails and outdoor recreation. But it's really this Winnesheek Energy District that is unique to Decor that we've heard about all these things that we could do to help improve our house, but we didn't exactly know how to do it. And the Winnesheek Energy District has taught us how to do that. They've done some of the things and they've been a great resource. We can do this.